What's going on smart people? I'm really excited for today because today we're taking a look at Fermi problems. And for those of you who might not know, Enrico Fermi was an Italian physicist. He's credited for being one of the fathers of nuclear physics. He worked on the Manhattan Project and he had a very particular talent in that he could estimate just about anything. This man could tell you approximately how many piano tuners are in the state of New York. Now there were a lot of these types of problems that Fermi was able to estimate that later became known as Fermi problems. And that's what we're looking at today. Today we're going to try to answer some of these to within one order of magnitude accuracy. That means within a factor of 10. And as always, I will leave a link in the description so that you can play this game with your friends and see if you can estimate how many people have a wedgie right now in Wyoming or something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. These questions are completely randomized, but just to make sure that there's no tomfoolery, I'm going to refresh again so that you know. And let's get started with question one. Compute the largest acceleration to which a human volunteer has been subjected divided by the free fall acceleration on Pluto. Okay, Free, largest acceleration, so I'm assuming that that wouldn't be more than like 10 G's that a person's been subject to, I'm not sure, but uh, but orders of magnitude, it's not going to be 100 G's, um, <laughs> these, these people aren't Goku, so 10 G's compared to the free fall acceleration on Pluto, I feel like, um, I feel like that would only be like a factor of one, one or two, right? 10 G's. Pluto, it's probably the same order of magnitude, right? Because uh, it's not going to be like 10 times less gravity. Maybe it is, though. Maybe it is, though. 10 times less. So compute the largest acceleration. So 10 divided by 1. Yeah, I'm going to say it's around this ballpark, though. I don't think it's that wildly off. So it was two orders of magnitude. Starting off very not that strong. What does a cupcake weigh measured in units of electrons? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, okay. So, okay. What is it? One gram of carbon is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Okay, so there's, so there's that, I think that many, so let's use that as a jumping off point in like, as far as a gram goes. So, so let's move up. Let's go up, and then, so that, if that's an atom, but an atom is like, or, or a proton is what, like, oh, but that's also going to be, if a proton is roughly, what, a thousand times more massive than an electron, and then we've got 12 of them, so that's, that's tens of thousand times more. So if it's 23 for a gram, then it would be uh, 27 for the electron, and then round up an order of magnitude for it to be more than a gram. So let's say 28. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so that was that was an order of magnitude off. I'm, I'm getting better, I'm learning. Not too bad for someone not using a calculator or a piece of paper for that matter. How many drops of water does it take to equal the weight of a jumbo marshmallow? Okay. Uh, how many drops of water? That's actually a really good question. How much does a drop of water weigh? Well, okay, I don't know what a drop of water weighs, but how much space does that take up? I feel like it would take, um, man, this is going to make me, I feel, I feel rushed to think because I don't want this to be a boring video of just me, me thinking the entire time. So how many, how many drops of water would it take to make, say, a cup of water? Because I feel like a cup of water is at least the same order of magnitude as the weight of a jumbo marshmallow. No, it's not. That's probably well. No, it, it's. I'm sure it's factors of like, factors more massive, but not an order of magnitude more massive. Yes, it would. I think it would. I think it would exactly be that. But still, I bet there's. I bet you would have to do that over a thousand times, a thousand, ten thousand times to to get a cup of water. So I think ten to the four. I think it already. I think it already knew what we wanted. But let's go down to a thousand. I think that that's closer. So I was another. Again, I was an order of magnitude off. Seems like that's not too hard to do. But then when you think about it, it's like, man, I was off by ten. I was ten times off. To find the price of a full-size Stradivarius student violin by the price of an average new car. I have no idea how much a violin is. 
um, I if it's comparable to like a nice guitar like a nice you know fender or something like that then it could be like a thousand dollars a couple thousand dollars so ten to the three divided by the price of ten to the four of an average new card a few ten, tens of thousands so yeah I have, it, this really depends on how much that violin costs I have no idea so that would be it's definitely going to be in the negative so let's say that violins can be uh, yeah I have no idea how much a violin costs let's let's say it's like only a few hundred dollars I don't know I have a feeling that it costs less than a really nice guitar so let's say 10 to the 2 so 100 divided by 10 to the 4 so that's going to be 10 to the minus 2 right yeah perfect we're getting better we're getting much better what is the number of bowling balls that would see that's one where you could get an order of magnitude off if you think that this kind of violin costs like a thousand dollars so it's pretty easy to get an order off actually what is the number of bowling balls it would take to fill fill the Atlantic Ocean are you kidding me I don't know how big the Atlantic Ocean is the earth is mostly water does that help <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's let's think in terms of continental United States. So lengthwise, that's what I'm assuming that the ocean is going to be longer than the United States. So I'm going to take that into consideration. So if the United States is like 3,000 miles across, let's call that. Let's just call that 6,000 kilometers, and let's pretend that the United States is a perfect square. So it's 6,000 kilometers times 6,000 kilometers. So that's uh, that's going to be 36,000 kilometers squared okay so that's 36 million uh, meters right am I doing that right square kilometers uh, hold on no I'm an idiot I'm such an idiot no that's 36 back up 6,000 kilometers okay 6,000 kilometers so 6 million meters times 6 million meters so I need to start thinking, I, I don't know why I'm thinking in terms of millions and billions and thousands, I need to put it back into scientific notation. That's the easiest way to think about these kinds of problems. So we got 10, 10 to the 3 times 10 to the 3, so that's 10 to the 6, times 10 to the 3 for depth. Let's pretend it's also the same amount deep, I don't know. So that's 10 to the 9, so a billion, so a billion kilometers oh so I should have probably put it God I'm, so, I'm sorry you guys have to sit through me being an idiot here so <laughs> let's go back so if it's 10 to the 3 kilometers let's not think of it that way let's think of it as 10 to the 6 meters that'll be easier so 10 to the 6 meters times 10 to the 6 so that's 10 to the 12 10 to the 18 there we go so let's think of that in terms of square meters how many bowling balls would it take to fill the Atlantic Ocean so if a bowling ball was a meter, then that would already be that would already help our answer there. But let's say a bowling ball. I think it will be pretty close to that, though. So if it's uh, what was my answer? It was 10 to the 18. But I'm assuming the Atlantic Ocean might be like an order of magnitude bigger than that. So let's say 10 to the 19, and then factor in the fact that a bowling ball. Well, you could fit almost. You couldn't really fit 10. But I feel like the Atlantic Ocean is huge. But I'm going to say 10 to the 19. I'm going to say it. Oh, again, I was an order of magnitude off. I'm not that bad at this. <laughs> it's like getting a 10% on a, on a quiz and being like, I was only an order of magnitude off from a from 100, Mom. Chill out. You don't get me. Determine the distance from Pluto to the sun divided by the width of a strand of human hair. This is what people think. I feel like when you tell people that you do physics, or people say they hate physics, and they make a meme out of hating physics, that's the question they pretend to see on their physics exams, is this one right here. Determine the distance from Pluto to the sun. Oh man, how far? Oh god, this one is going to be really hard for me. I know how far the sun is from us, roughly. I have no idea how far we are from Pluto, and I definitely don't know how far Pluto is from the sun. 
but let's let's assume let's just again we're not we're looking at orders of magnitude here so if we are on the order of a magnitude of like 100 million miles from the sun so that's 100 million so that's 10 to the 8 miles so let's just say that it's roughly the same so let's say yeah let's say roughly 10 to the 8 kilometers then 2 10 to the 8 kilometers to the sun and then Pluto's really far, so I'm going to tack on another two orders of magnitude. So if it's 10 to the 8, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say 10 to the 10. I'm going to say 10 to the 10. Was that kilometers or miles? What was I saying? I need to be writing this stuff down. Oh my god. So 100 million. 100 million is 10 to the 8 meter. Yeah. So uh, it, 10 to the 10 meters. Okay, right, yes. No, 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 you're confusing me. If I'm saying 10 to the eight meters, no, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> it would be so nice to just have my thoughts together on a piece of paper right now. So if I said 100 million miles, let's say that that's the same thing as 100 million kilometers to within like a factor of two. Okay, so 100 million kilometers so that's 100 million, so that's 10 to the 8 kilometers, which is 10 to the 11. There we go. So let's tack on two more orders of magnitude. So that's 10 to the 13 divided by the width of a strand of human hair. Let's say that a human hair, well, how many human hairs are in a meter? Well, there's probably like a thousand in an inch. So there's probably like, so if there's a thousand in an inch, then that would mean that there's roughly, what, 10,000 in a foot. Okay, and then times three would give you so like thirty thousand in a in a meter maybe, which would mean that roughly speaking, a human hair is one ten thousandth the width of a meter. A human hair is one thousandth one ten thousandth one ten thousandth of a meter. So ten to the minus four. Okay, so ten. So now we're talking about the distance to Pluto, so 10, what was it, 10 to the 13? I think I said, divided by 10 to the minus 4, so 10 to the 17. <laughs> oh my god, are you proud of me, Dad? <laughs> With how many times I missed my footing on that problem, I can't believe that actually worked out. Oh, no, no need to get cocky though. As a factor, how much more is the price of all the real estate in Florida than the price of all the real real estate in Manhattan? I need to read that again. As a factor, how much more is the price of all real estate in Florida than the price of all real estate in Manhattan? This might, this one's tough. As a factor, how much more? Is the price of everything and when you when you combine it well I wonder I wonder if the way to do this let's say let's say that there's an order of magnitude more things in one spot than in Florida and then maybe maybe there's an order of magnitude higher as well because you could rent out spaces above you okay so let's say 10 to the 2 Okay, so it was actually one. That that sounds fair. I mean, not everything is a two is a like <laughs> ten times taller than Florida. So that's fine. I can live with that one though too. Okay, how many U.S. dollar coins would it take in order to create a stack from Istanbul to Beijing? I'm gonna sleep so well tonight after thinking about this stuff. Oh my god, Istanbul to Beijing. For those of you who don't know, modern-day Istanbul is where Turkey is, okay, which is also where Constantinople used to be, sort of. How many U.S. dollars? I could be completely wrong from what I know. My geography is terrible. How many U.S. dollar coins would it take to create a stack from Istanbul to Beijing? Okay, how many? How far is Istanbul from China? Uh. Well, I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's on the order of, of like, a, I'm sure it's more than a thousand miles. So it's probably, I think it's probably more than a thousand miles. 
So, but let's say it's less than 10,000. So 10 to the four miles, so 10 to the four kilograms, it's all kilograms. 10 to the four kilometers, so 10 to the seven meters, roughly, okay? So 10 to the seven meters, hold on to that number. How many coins could you think you could fit in like a foot? I would say, I say roughly 100, right? Maybe. So 100 in a foot, so like 300 in a meter, whatever. So 100 times 10 to the 7, so 10 to the 9. I might have done this one way too fast. Not that bad though, seriously. Still in order, so it seems like on average I'm about an order of magnitude off. I can, I can live, I mean Fermi was Italian, I'm only a quarter Italian, so it checks out why, why I'm an order of magnitude off instead of spot on. How many electrons go through a toaster in the time it takes for a Panasonic 50 inch plasma TV to consume 200 billion joules? What a great question to, to leave off on. I will leave this as an exercise for, I'm just kidding, I'm gonna try to, I have no idea. Holy crap. Um, how many electrons go through a toaster in the time it takes for a 50 inch plasma TV to consume 200 billion joules? Oh my god. I really don't know this one. So I think I think the way to be thinking about this is in terms of electron volts and then converting into joules. So if, what is it, uh, a little wall outlet is what, like 120 watts? 110, 120 watts of power? Okay. Well, electrons also move really slow through wires, I think. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be lower. This one is the guess one. I really, I would have to sit down. This is, this is the tough one for me. 10, yeah, this one, this one is a wild guess. Nine orders of is a billion times off. I can live with that one. That one really skewed my answer. So from six to 10, my average distance was 2.4. Does it have like one to five? One to five, my average distance was 2.4. Okay, well, guys, that was the Fermi question video. That was that was fun. That was really fun. I would love to do this again. Let me know in the comment section how you guys did. Also, let me know in the comment section how much you liked the video. Is this something you'd like me to do again? Let me know, and I'll see you guys there.